Ten years ago, the word risk wasn't even a part of my vocabulary. Growing up a survivor of childhood sexual abuse had left me broken. After the things I had been through, I was happy to have just survived and was content with the status quo. But it's not okay to be just okay. It's important to be bold. So I am setting out on my greatest adventure yet, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest freestanding mountain on the planet, and summiting her on my 35th birthday. By reaching her peak, I'm hoping to cap off a decade-long journey towards happiness and healing while giving back to the community that saved my life. Let's do this. It's time to rewrite my story to prove that trauma survivors everywhere can be so much more than just survivors. My first stop, Moshi, Tanzania. And I am immediately overwhelmed by new sights, sounds, and smells. And most incredibly, a warm welcome by a beautiful local family who hosted me on my first night in East Africa. Sad? My hand? Trauma can wreak havoc on your ability to connect. Real human connection used to terrify me. Being vulnerable with strangers was never an option, but here, on the other side of the world, and even with this massive language barrier, I'm able to let go of all that, and I'm accepted. No judgment, no preconceived notions of who I am, just real and intimate connection. <laughs> So we made it here in Tanzania. It took 28 hours and three flights to get here. So tomorrow starts our first day of the adventure. So here we go. I spent a day acclimatizing to the local culture. I was able to visit an incredible coffee farm and witness a local harvesting celebration. The impact of this adventure was already beginning to show. This is how life should be lived. To say that today was magical would be an absolute understatement. The people here have a warmth and spirit that I've never seen anywhere else in the world. I'm a little bit blown away, actually. Hi, I'm Jordan. We went to a school this morning where we got to walk into the classes and meet the kids. The joy on their faces just to interact with us was something that I will carry in here for a long time. We played, we took selfies. Um, it was an incredible experience. And this is only day one. My heart's already so full. The next morning, we began our journey to a remote Maasai village, and the nerves were starting to kick in. This was it. Time to really leave those comfort zones behind. But first, we got to meet some of the locals. To be face to face with all that wildlife and these breathtaking landscapes was out of this world. I grew up watching these scenes in nature documentaries on public television, and here I was, living and breathing them. When we finally reached the Maasai, the tribe welcomed me into their community and quickly made me feel at home. The nerves I had felt earlier, gone. My head was clear and my heart was open. In the morning, we began with an introduction to spear throwing. I gotta say, it's not as easy as it looks. Okay. 
Oh, see, go, go close. But after a few lessons, I started to catch on. Then it was time to witness something that I had heard about, but wasn't quite expecting. In Maasai culture, livestock are everything. Virtually all social roles and status revolve around an individual's relationship with their livestock. And because the Maasai eat virtually no fruit, vegetables, or grain, cattle, goats, and sheep are their main source of food through their meat, their milk, and their blood. I accompanied the men of the tribe as they slaughtered a goat, suffocating it so as to not waste any of its blood. Although a bit gruesome, the experience was eye-opening and I quickly realized how important this goat was to the tribe's survival. Participating not only felt respectful, but it really bonded me to the men of the tribe. For that moment in time, I was one of them. I belonged. And so I jumped in head first and showed my commitment to learning by immersing myself in this beautiful culture. After a full belly of blood and raw goat's meat, I was brought to the center of the boma for a surprise. The elders of the tribe had organized a blessing ceremony and celebration. When they make celebrations, they make a drink that is made from the honey. This is the gift he's going to give you Hold on. after you have been blessed. Okay. Yes. You will use this to hike the mountain, to conquer the mountain. You will go and remember Tanzania. You will go and remember the Maasai community or family. This will give you a lot of power and strength. This moment is almost indescribable for me. Complete strangers lifting me up, celebrating me. Whatever doubts I ever had about my self-worth had disappeared. Stand up, Jordan. He's handing you the stick now as a gift that it will strengthen you to do everything that you want in your life. May the Lord bless you and give you more strength. We're still going. We were out there in a circle for two hours, singing, dancing, chanting, and we're still going. And the sky is so full of stars like you've never seen. It's unbelievable. I've never experienced what I have today, and I don't think I ever will again. It's fucking awesome. Okay, we've arrived at Londorosi Gate. This is the um, check-in point. Uh, and so we'll be walking from here to our first camp. We've got a team of six porters, a guide, and a cook. It's about a three-hour hike, I think, to our first camp. It's a pretty easy day. Um, but uh, here we go. It begins. Oh yeah, it is recording, yeah? hard to believe I'm in the middle of East Africa in this jungle. It's freaking amazing. Hey, wait, where are you going? <laughs> Sun is setting, dinner is soon. It's only day one and I'm already beside myself. 
today was supposed to be the easy day. I think I'm just getting used to it, but uh, my guide's amazing, Francis, he's awesome. My team is amazing. While I was walking, I was just thinking about how much I need to stop and appreciate really the privilege I have to be doing this. I've been planning this and saving for this for a long time, uh, almost two years. My heart is opening as we go on, and I really think this is gonna be awesome. Here's to tomorrow, here's another day, day two of 10. From the moment I conceived of this idea to climb Kilimanjaro, I knew it was going to be a challenging feat. But that is exactly why I decided that it was important to do. Challenge leads to change. I cannot be more happy right now. Woo! Yeah, good save. Surprised it's the first time I've fallen. <laughs> the sun is very, very strong. It's hot. It's hot. There is a chance for headache because of the heat. Uh -huh. There is a chance for the sunburn anywhere. If it's a chance for dehydration, there's a chance feeling dizzy. Oh, she's getting closer and closer. Oh yeah. <laughs> it looks so beautiful in the morning with the, when the sun hits it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then by the afternoon, it's covered in clouds. It's covered in clouds. Then by the night, you don't even need your headlamp. You don't need. Because the the moon is so bright. Yes, and uh, it, and it shines on the snow. Right. It's getting hard to breathe, that's for sure. It may seem counterintuitive that I set out on an adventure to heal and inspire all on my own, alone and disconnected. But the truth is that being comfortable in that solitude is what really solidified my happiness. Oh my God, I'm alone, yeah, but not at all lonely. I just came out of nowhere, eh? Skipped rain and went straight to ice. Yeah. It's big too. Buffalo camp. As I get higher and higher and the air grows thinner, the trek becomes harder, but I get happier. Climbing to Mordor, it looks like Lord of the Rings. Because I know every step I take is in the right direction. It wasn't as cold last night. Oh, it was <sighs> I got to tell you, this kind of thing changes you. There's nothing like pushing yourself, doing what you think and what others think you can't do. It's worth it. Every time I go and do something like this, I find a new piece of myself. I'm more confident. I realize that I really can do anything I want. Today's the first day that it really sort of felt like I was climbing a mountain. It was very steep. I started to really sort of feel it. The whole time I wanted to sort of reflect on, you know, everything. But what I found myself doing was just staring at my feet, focusing on putting one foot in front of the other. It's sort of a good metaphor for when life really gets tough. You just got to put one foot in front of the other, focus on that. And that's really what today was, just one foot in front of the other. I looked up at the mountain, I actually got really emotional. Just, I don't even know what it is. It's the beauty, the awe, the fact that I'm here, the fact that I'm doing this. Um, it was absolutely breathtaking. And I'm just excited, I'm really excited to keep going. I'm surprised at actually how many people are coming down. This mountain takes no prisoners. More casualties. At this altitude, 
the lack of oxygen can really start to affect you. I can't believe how many people are falling. Saves me, on me. Nothing like a little Moana to get you to the top. It's a beautiful day now. Yeah. Until, until that. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> until we get up there. <laughs> Seven days on the mountain definitely takes its toll on the body and the mind. And seeing so many people turn back this close to the top fueled me to keep pushing. That's what this whole thing is about. Pushing past where it's comfortable. That's not base camp up there, is it? Hmm. It is? Mm -hmm. You made it already? Maybe I'm getting used to it. Must be getting the hang of this. Summit day. So it's time. It's been a wild ride getting here almost two years, but today's the day we get to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. I'm pretty proud of myself. It's a bit cliche, but you really can't do anything you put your mind to. Heading to the summit very slowly. It starts to crystallize in my mind that this dream is actually about to come true. I'm almost there, but I'm one of the lucky ones. Here. Okay. And please down. She's not with me. She's right there. So that was a bit scary. Some girl like passed out and almost died. Like 20 meters from Witnessing that woman's body fail her and force her to turn back gave me an immense feeling of gratitude to have my health and be able to push on. My foot's bleeding. Uh, okay. Wow. I keep saying this looks like the moon, this looks like the moon, but this looks like the moon. Perfect. Eight days and we are very close to the highest point in Africa. Uhuru Peak. As I saw the summit off in the distance and I walked toward it, time slowed down. I felt this tidal wave of accomplishment, pride, relief, and joy. Happy birthday, dear Jordan! Happy birthday, It's so easy to be complacent in life, but I don't want my mark on this earth to be surviving my childhood. That's not enough for me. I've got the survival part down pat. It's time to live. You made it. Day eight, champion. very satisfied. I've seen what I came to see. <laughs> Let's hope I 
make it through this freezing cold windy night. <laughs> But I did it. It's over. I made it. Kilimanjaro Expedition Challenge is done. Getting to the summit of Kilimanjaro is all mental. That's it. It's been wild. This last 10 days has been absolutely incredible, transformative, life-changing, amazing, all that great stuff. There's something about being on this mountain for the last 10 days. It's really spoke to me. Two, three, two. Cheers. I've loved every minute of this whole experience. All of it. It's been awesome. Healing from trauma isn't always achieved from your therapist's couch. Experience is an essential piece of that puzzle it elicits a profound and lasting change. I'm charged with a whole new energy. As I get further away from my old life, I begin to realize that this is how it should be. I'm still standing. I've made my mark. I was here. So go climb your mountain. It's worth it. I promise. <laughs>